public health and health care really are the closest of kin, and it's so important that we work together hand in hand as we seek the solutions for our patients to make them healthier. Probably the classic example, which we all know of, was in tobacco and smoking, where public health policy through raising uh, the cost of cigarettes, with tobacco taxes, creating clean indoor air laws, assuring there was coverage for nicotine replacement and smoking cessation devices, um, really drove people into the clinician's office. And for the first time, with the coverage of medications and also with the quit lines available, physicians could actually do something about their patients who came in and smoked. So by bringing public health and primary care together, we dramatically improved the health of our nation with one of our critical risk factors. We have to look across many other areas to see where else we can partner, whether it's obesity or on infectious diseases and immunizations. But there's real promise when we work together, um, and we'll really both achieve our potential uh, in, in a greater fashion when we do this together. It's one of the reasons we're so excited about the uh, integration forum or the public health primary care collaboration that ASTO has been supporting. This began, of course, at following the IOM report on the integration of public health and primary care. And at that time, we realized that um, that report, as important as it was, dealt mostly at the federal level. And we really needed to get the frontline clinicians and the frontline public health agencies together and working. And now we've grown to over 60 organizations that are collaborating um, together, learning from each other, developing common languages, um, and really seeking solutions that we couldn't do on our own. It's really important uh, to recognize that when we're trying to bring about change in a system, which will actually impact the health of the public and how well we care for them, there are no silver bullets. Wouldn't it be nice if there was only one thing we had to do and we fix the situation? And therefore, it's necessary to take a really systematic view of if we want to accomplish something, what are all the steps that need to take place to accomplish that? And by Medicaid and public health working together, we can accomplish so much more than we could alone. For example, with the long-acting contraceptives, or LARCs, ASTO has a collaborative going, um, which is really co-led by the public health officials and by Medicaid officials. Now, it could be easy to say, well, all we need to do is uh, educate providers and educate the patients about um, long-acting contraceptive, contraceptives, but we know that won't do it. If the doctors don't know how to place them, for example, or if uh, they're not covered by Medicaid. And even if they're covered by Medicaid, then we need to look at, okay, do the doctors know how to appropriately code for it? And do the Medicaid codes line up? For example, if a plug LARC is put in in the postpartum period, you need to change from an obstetrical bundle to a separate payment for the LARC. So the point is there's so many different steps if we're going to really achieve what we want to achieve that Medicaid and public health have to work together so that we remove all the barriers and create all these incentives we can to reach the outcome we're trying to reach. So it's important when we sit down, even as closely aligned as public health and, and Medicaid can be, to truly understand each other, develop that common language, and understand that what we try to do is somewhat different. Uh, Medicaid historically um, has paid claims, and now Medicaid is moving into an area where they contract with managed care organizations to provide the uh, health insurance services. Um, and they have many constraints upon them within that environment. Probably everybody out there comes to Medicaid with a great idea about how if you only do this, you'll save money. And in public health, we're looking at using population health interventions that could actually improve the health of individuals, sometimes outside of the health care system specifically, such as doing um, home uh, assessments for asthma, uh, such as doing lead abatement to prevent uh, poisoning of children, um, such as enforcing clean indoor air laws. So there's so many public health things that will affect people of Medicaid. Um, and so it's natural that we work together. But when we come together, again, we need to be fully respectful and understand that we, although we have the same goal, we have slightly different constraints and incentives upon us. And some of the collaborations we're doing are really getting at that and building those relationships so that we can work together successfully in the future. It's also important to recognize that as uh, professionals working for the same st states, typically Medicaid officials and public health officials, um, coming together uh, is important and perhaps easier because we work for the same bosses in many cases, the governors. 
but recognizing that Medicaid is part of the health care, uh, care system, just as public health is part of the overall health system, and sometimes reaching out to those we may be uncomfortable working with. That would include private insurers who may take care of half to three quarters of the population um, outside of Medicaid. Um, also, many of those private insurers are doing managed Medicaid. Um, so get, bringing them in the room is important. Bringing the hospitals in the room, bringing the different provider groups in the room, bringing the pharmaceutical companies in the room. So many of these systems are so complex that we need to make sure we have all the players at the table when we're seeking solutions because each of them has expertise that can contribute toward what we're doing. Um, we need to sort of move outside our comfort zone and we'll be working with a lot of partners that in the past we hadn't worked with.